time for Cigar Talk, the fastest growing cigar show in the nation. Whether you're a new cigar enthusiast or a cigar aficionado, we have something for everyone. Bringing you the best interviews, cigar reviews. So grab yourself a cigar. It's time to light them up. Welcome back to Cigar Talk. I'm your host, Rob Jones, and this is the last Cigar Talk. This show is going to be a little different for most. 267 episodes. Cigar Talk was started in December of uh, 2018. And what a hell of a ride. I've got to say it's been enjoyable. Like that doesn't even do it justice. I've had so much fun doing Cigar Talk. And let me tell you, I've I've met some badass people. I've met what a lot of us consider to be the celebrities in the business. Sokka, Michael Herklotz, Al McAuliffe. I mean, you can't forget the godfather, Carlito. Mike Rosales, Robert Caldwell. The list goes on and on. And I got to say, I enjoyed talking to those guys. They're very interesting people. And then, man, I can't even tell you how many cigar shop owners I've interviewed. Love those guys. Get a different perspective. So many different opinions that were valuable across the board. But out of all of it, what made Cigar Talk so damn good for me was you guys. That's tuning in and listening joining the Discord, hanging out, doing video conferences while we smoke cigars, drink bourbon. You guys, a lot of people talk about the cigar community, and I love the community, but you guys were not the cigar community for me. You guys are family. And I want to say thank you for being part of the journey. So many of you guys, like, it's hard for me to think that I want to say thank you to you guys because I don't want to leave anybody out because everyone is so loved by me, okay? Jack's Rocks, last name says it all. Groot, dude, keep doing what you're doing. You you are rocking it. Trent, keep following that dream, man. Sean O'Connor, love that guy, man. What a good dude. Charles Taylor. Me and that dude's had a lot of good one-on-one conversations. Emu and your wife coming, hanging out at the studio, partying with us while we're doing a show. I got to say thank you to Bryant Falconer. Best co-host I ever had. Good friend. And I'm thankful for his contribution to Cigar Talk. He made Cigar Talk better, and I say thank you for that. Larry, for everything you've done, Hatch, everything you've done, Sam, Carlos. I mean, we have so many people to say thank you for this ride, but the people that I want to say thank you to the most are the people that I got to know as family. And I'm even going to throw out Orlando, okay? If you know Orlando, I'm going to let him come in for the group hug. He's a good dude. He's a weird dude, but he's a good dude. Patrick, wherever you are these days, man, I hope you're doing good. And I'll never forget when I saw you pass out, throw up on a Zoom call. You're a rock star, dude. Zeka, never forget you, man. You're a solid dude. Thank you for being part of Cigar Talk and being part of my life. So a lot of you guys uh, may not know this. You know, number one episode of Cigar Talk was December the 15th, 2018. Our very first show was done at the Train Car Cigar Bar. Love that place. If you ever get the opportunity and you're in the Big Spring area, if you're close, if you're 100 miles from Big Spring, you should go by there. It's one of the most unique cigar lounges I've been to. Great freaking ownership they are truly about the cigar smokers experience and that is to me the core of a cigar lounge so the final episode i'm going to take a quick break here shortly but 
When I come back, I'm going to be interviewing Brent, our original interview, 266 episodes ago. So I'm excited to get Brent in here. I hope you guys enjoy it. Send me some messages. My email is down in the show notes. Love to hear from you. And also, uh, I'm going to start a new show. That's that's the big change. I'm still going to be smoking cigars. I probably, I will, I will still be drinking bourbon. But the people that I interview going forward are not just going to be limited to people in the cigar industry. And so, I'm excited about it. Like I loved interviewing people in the cigar industry, but there's a lot of great stories out there that I want to dive into and let you guys share what I get out of it. And I hope you'll tag along and we'll see how the crew podcast does that's where we're going to be next the crew podcast so let's get on to it brent we'll be right there don't go anywhere we'll be right back how's uh how's the train car man man it's really good it's good we are almost eight years old it'll be uh eight years this december which blows my mind partially because it flew by partially because it feels like 10 lifetimes ago <laughs> dude i remember going through covid dude that was rough yes it was I, so, and i'm not talking for me i'm talking for you I, I was worried well it was uh very very painful that's for sure but we we have great people good stuff so it was pretty pretty interesting it, it was a, a good eye-opener how many good people we had in our in our life also so it uh also showed us uh some of the unfortunate power of the government you could say <laughs> yeah you saw it firsthand yep yep so well uh uh i'm smoking a monte cristo 1935 anniversary very nice have you had one of those i have not actually so uh, you know i'm I, I've always been a basher of monte cristos but they do make a few really good cigars oh yeah, oh, yeah. so i uh pretty excited have you smoked one of those yet i have not what is that so this here is the craft maquette la mastranza by roma craft so this is the pre-release uh it's a uh, mexican san andreas wrapper uh spanish market selection so we were one of 60 retailers that are going to sell these but these were just the pre-release and so this was a pretty fun deal that we got to do and smoke through and uh the actual core line there's three sizes that are coming out they're be, they're getting they're in shipment to austin now so they're going to have them this week maybe early next week and then turn around ship them to us and we have there's 60 of us retailers are going to have them so it's kind of like uh wonderlust how wonderlust is only sold in europe these will only be in america and so um we but only to the 60 retailers yep and so yeah only 60 shops in the world or America, whatever you want to say, that have them, and we were pretty proud that we were one of those sixty with Roma. That was that was pretty fun. So, like that says a lot about you guys. Well, yeah, we, we, they, they're they're so good. We we have a good relationship with them, and we got a lot of customers who really like it. We started out with five facings only on Roma Crap, like literally five different cigars, and now you know we got all of them because. Do you know how many you have now? Got to be. It's over forty. I was gonna say you have a whole wall section yeah. of Roma. Yep. So. Yeah, that, that, that's been a, a fun relationship and just really good dudes, so we really like those guys. Yeah, I, I'm a huge fan of both of those guys. Uh, and you know what? Here's here's one interview that escaped us for the whole five and a half years with Skip Martin. That, that's a little tougher to get, I believe, yeah. Oh, so. it's a lot tougher. I've tried, and I've tried, and I've tried. Now, Mike, Mike's always ready to go. And he's always been a great sport, and we've loved having him on the show. I remember the first time he was on the show, it was a four-hour interview. <laughs> you know, we're thinking it's going to be like maybe an hour. And it was hard to leave because, you know, Mike can tell some good stories. Mm-hmm. So did you go to PCA this year? I did. I did. How was and that? The, man, it was really good. It was uh, earlier in the year, which was a change, which we liked. And then I, uh, I brought – two people with i brought jim our tobacconist and paula our manager and they got to come for the first time and back on our social media if you see one of the pictures we had posted it was awesome i got a picture of them walking in for the first time and their eyes just got huge and their jaws dropped as they walk into this room 
they knew what to expect, but they did not know what to expect. It was so cool. And uh, it reminded me of my first time going to the show and how you almost forget that sometimes. And I think as cigar smokers, even like the initial excitement getting into cigars and all the new stuff and all the things and the, the, the society and the people and the culture. Then after you're in it for a while, you just kind of, you're just in it. You forget how exciting that is. So I love that with, with new customers as well. You get someone who gets in and they're 100%. going. We, we were talking about that yesterday and how many shops I see that don't provide the company or the customer service and the company's experience to offer. So many yeah. times that just gets to be like nonchalantly forgotten. And now you have cigar smokers. How many, how many cigar smokers come through your shop that when you say, hey, do you need some help? You see a light in their eyes because they're like, yes, please, I need some help. Because when you're a new cigar smoker, you don't know shit. Yep, yep. And it's very intimidating. That's one of the things we still work on with, with our staff. At the moment, I can say the girls, and there's no other guys besides me here, but, you know, sometimes there are. So anyways, but I say to the girls, I'm like, hey, you know, find out if they're new here. And we, and we do that. We try to take them on a tour. You know, you show them around and make, make them feel at home. You know, this is the porch up here. That's the patio down below. Everything everything that the brick encloses is ours. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and then, you know, down here, show them the lounge, uh, point out where the restrooms are, make them feel welcome, and uh, – see what we can do for them. And then, yeah, picking out and showing new cigars, answering questions on it. And then same thing with our staff. We, uh, we had our uh, a staff meeting Sunday night and just went through some of the basics of even cigars. As, as we get new employees, we show one person this or a different one that, trying to stay, you know, keep all of us informed, you know, at the same level or keep stepping up all of our game. And it's fun watching them train each other and teach each other tips and tricks as well. So it's been a pretty fun journey. Yeah, and think about when you first started. When you first opened up, it was just, it, at one time, it was just you and Camille, right? Well, we did have employees right from the start, which was smart. Like, we, we knew that we didn't want to just own our job. So we did have employees from the start, but we were here a lot. I still am. She's She doesn't have to be anymore. Uh, we, we have a fourth child now. I don't know if you know that. No, so I did we, not know we, that. Wow. She was born Valentine's Day of this year, so she's seven months old. Um, but anyway, so she does that. She homeschools the kids. She uh, manages some properties, things like that. So she's got all of her own stuff going as well, which is really impressive. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's owning a business is a lot like having a child that never grows up. It'll always take take that time or, or a pet, you know. So you oh, 100%. Be- you're learning it. You're figuring out how to make it grow. And, I mean, it's like it even throws temper tantrums. Oh, yes, it does. But, it's man, it's rewarding. It's fun. So. Well, I say congratulations and hats off. Eight years, man. That's an accomplishment, dude. It really is. I mean, you think about how many businesses in the last eight years have opened and closed their doors. You know what I mean? Yep. And in the American landscape, it's sad to say that a lot of mom and pop shops don't make it anymore. And do you do you consider yourself a mom and pop shop? Oh, definitely still. I mean, yeah. You know, I mean, I know you are, but I mean, to when I look at you, I don't go, that's pop. No, <laughs> so it's pretty funny. Uh, one of the things a lot of people call me that I've never claimed, but I actually really like it. It's pretty funny. It's boss man. They're like, hey, where's boss man at? And I think that one's pretty funny because like, that's not on my locker or anything. But I, uh, one of our customers actually made baseball jerseys in the back of it said boss man on the back. And I was like, I like that. That's pretty funny. But nice. it's one of those, it's like a nickname. If you claim it yourself, it doesn't work. Oh, 100%. 100%. You can't, you can't make up your own nickname. But that's the other thing with us, you know, like I try to make sure to maintain that we're a cigar shop that happens to have a great bar, puts out live music. That's great. But we're not a music venue. We're a cigar shop first. We are more than a cigar shop. We are a cigar bar. And I have come to terms with that because we need both to keep the doors open with a small enough community. But um, to try to keep that focus and make sure that it stays on the cigars because there's you wouldn't believe how many people come through the train car who aren't cigar smokers. Or maybe even aren't drinkers, but, uh, you know, they come for the music. They might drink a ginger ale or a Dr. Pepper. And they come for the, the, the culture that we have, the, the, the hanging out. So what we provide is casual social interaction at its finest. And yeah. And, I mean, the location yeah. is great. I mean, what I speak by location is your facility is amazing. Oh, very nice. Oh, yeah. So, And it's like just, 
I think probably about a month ago, I was in Lubbock hanging out with Tim. And I don't remember if you remember Tim, but we both came down one night and hung out and smoked cigars and had a few drinks and stayed at the hotel locally. And it was like, man, what a great venue for a great experience. You had the cigars, you had bourbon, you had coffee, which I'm a huge coffee nut. And then you also had music. And I mean, it was like, wow, you, you've got the trifecta going on here. And then you take all of that and you cram it into the most cool facility that I've ever seen for a cigar shop. It's two train cars. And then the stage is a caboose. I mean, where's there another cigar shop like that? Hopefully nowhere else. They're ripping us off if they are. There's not <laughs> anywhere even close to that, man. That, like, that was the initial me just, like, I, I know how your employees felt when they walked into PCA, because that's how I felt the first time I walked into your place. Well, thank you. Oh, dude, I, I'll talk, I tell people all the time, if you have not been to the train car, you owe it to yourself. And, I mean, I've told people that of all far reaches of the show, but also – just when I go out and see people in public, you know, I'm like, hey, y'all been in that train car? And I know you know a lot of the same guys I know because uh, you know uh, Brad out of Lubbock? Yep. Used to manage the Good Karma. Yep. And he tells me about all the guys that he's brought down to your place. Oh, yeah. They love coming down there. The network of cigar smokers out here in West Texas is phenomenal. But same thing with Cigar Talk, man. How long has it been on that since we did that first episode? Well, this December 18th, um, excuse me, December 15th will be six years ago. Wow. That's so cool too, man. And you know, the reason that you're on this episode, and I, I appreciate you agreeing to do it, was we started with the train car. We're finishing yeah. with the train car. And I couldn't think of a better way to come full circle. And one in a way to cigar talk to say thank you to you because when I didn't have an idea about what the hell I was doing, you let me come down to your shop and do a show and I screwed it up and we had to come back and redo it. And you were cool about that. And so I was like, there's only one way to finish up cigar talk and that's to go back where we started. So I really do appreciate you taking the time, man. And I love it. I'm, I'm proud of you, what you've done with it. Uh, we, when we went to PCA, we actually drove. We didn't fly. Partially, my baby was born February 14th. That's our fourth child. Well, the show was in March. Her like due date five weeks later, huh? Yeah, her due date was early March. And if it wound up going negative and if there were complications, I told my, my crew, like, if there's something comes up, we're just going to miss the show. Like, I don't want to, but we're not buying tickets all that. We'll drive. By driving, we get to hang out, talk the way there and back smoke cigars the whole way you can't smoke a cigar in an airplane so we we got in my truck and we drove all the way to vegas from big spring and then drove back afterwards and listening to some music some audiobooks podcasts we listened to cigar talk i think three or four episodes as well on that did so. you make them listen to the first one because <laughs> you know you know if anybody you know what's funny is you realize that the number one episode is the most listened to episode of all times oh really yeah, I suppose like, everyone checking it out to decide what they're going to do. And, yeah, right, because a lot of people will start with like whatever episode you're on, and then they'll be like, "Oh, I want to listen to another one," and they'll go back, and then they'll go back, and then they're like, "Man, I'm digging this. I'm just going to go back to the very first one and start." So the number one episode is by far the most listened to, and what's crazy is it's also the worst audio quality of all of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everyone's, everyone's just figuring it out, yeah. Yeah, so the audio quality was horrible, but so many people told me, man, I'm glad your audio got better, but that was such a good story that it didn't bother us. And I'm like, wow, I'm glad, because Brandon and Camille did a great job of telling their story, but that audio was awful. <laughs> hey, man, that, that's all that you look at. When we opened, I didn't have cutters and lighters for sale because I forgot about it because I've always got it in my pocket. Yeah. And, you know, we're trying to do all these things and you to think of the customer and think of that. But in my mind, it was like, well, if you're coming here to buy a cigar, you're a cigar smoker. But we had a lot of people come in like, let's check this place out. Let's see what it's all about. So uh, I had some family members run 
and uh, buy some cheap cutters and lighters from a, a, a drive through smoke shop. So we just had cutters and lighters available, nothing for sale, but so people could cut and light without just having so they to could smoke. smoke. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Then, uh, we did those soft openings. We talked about that. Things like I didn't have a corkscrew for our wine bottles because everyone has one in their kitchen drawer. So when you know, but when you open a new business, you don't have your kitchen drawer. <laughs> So it was so, pretty humorous. So we've learned a lot over over this eight years, but it's been a lot of it fun. funny it looking was, back how many of the lessons you learned that you now consider like, wow, that was basic. I I, I can't believe I didn't think of that. But when yeah. you go into business, man, you're pulled in so many different directions at one time that it's almost impossible to think of everything you need. It is. And so, yeah, luckily we caught most of those things with soft openings. I think we probably talked about that even in our first episode with you. But yeah. Six years ago. Yeah, wow, man. So let me ask you this. Do you remember the first cigars y'all brought in? Yeah. What was that? So, so the very first brand was Crowned Heads. And I did that intentionally. I've loved Crowned Heads forever. I still do. And so I made sure that I placed our, our first purchase order ever was through Crowned Heads. And then I waited two days before I placed anything else because I wanted them to be the first thing to arrive in the shop. But we had Crowned Heads. Arturo Fuente and Leaf by Oscar. And that was it, I believe, when we opened our doors. We had other stuff in the works and getting going, but we just didn't know what we didn't know. And so we had the two cabinets, and I had some five-count cigar caddy travel cases, and I spaced them out on the shelves in the humidors, seasoning them, but to take up space to look like it wasn't so empty. Right, right. Now we've got so many cigars that they can't all get displayed, and we literally have stuff. This is also bad business. I've learned over time buying more than I can put on the shelves. There's only so much real estate. So it's in the back and then it's only sold through word of mouth. If you come in, you say, Hey, what about such and such cigar? I can say, Oh yeah, I got that. It's just, you can't see it because I don't have enough room for everything. And so the, the pulling and cycling and doing that, uh, we've learned things like there's brands you love or reps you love, but if the cigars don't sell, you can only put them in people's hands for so long, and at some point, it's got to sell itself. It doesn't mean we don't continually talk about it and keep on reminding people. And it doesn't mean it's a bad cigar. It's just that partially, partially it's the size of the community. Uh, we're in a town of you know, 20, 30,000 people, if that. A lot of it's traveling with oil field and other workers that, that come and go. So I can't have the same number of selection as, say, a shop in Dallas or Houston um, or even, you know, just say Aveline as, as far as the number of people that you get through your doors. Yeah. Cause so, we're 140,000 people. Exactly. And I mean, then you look at Lubbock, what's that now? Three, 260. Mm -hmm. so, so, I mean, big spring dude, that's a challenge in itself to open a thriving cigar company business, uh, lounge. It really is. I mean, it's like, I think it's an inspiration to entrepreneurs that see an opportunity in a smaller town and think to themselves, man, this town wouldn't support a cigar shop. And it's like, are you sure? Maybe your people don't have anywhere to go. And sure, there's variables that come into play because you are on the interstate. You yeah. are in a very heavy trafficked area, like you say, with the oil field workers. So you have to look at, what your possibilities are, but I also think that a lot of smaller towns could really use a good shop. Agreed. It ends up being that third place, uh, you know, not your home, not your work, but that third place where you can come and just have people to hang out with. And that's, that's more the cigar shop thing, but it's as much bars. Uh, but I had a good friend with a, a good friend in yesterday. We talked about that. That's the beauty of the cigars. If you if you overindulge a little too much on your cigars, you can still get back on the highway and keep driving. Right. You, with, you know, beer or whiskey or something, which we sell. But at that point, you got to be a little bit more moderate if you're going to keep going, keep traveling, doing all that. Um, the more cigars you smoke, the better the conversation gets. That's not always the case with alcohol. <laughs> oh, 100%. 100%. And let me ask you this, Brent. I've, I've never asked you this, but... Like over the years, because you are a cigar bar, have you ever had issues with people overindulging on the alcohol? And how did you have to handle that? 
We have we 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 have a really really good staff. I'm really proud of them. They they try to be proactive all the time on that. And one of the things that I'll tell customers, but I'll also tell them if, if someone's getting slowed down or paced, we let them know it's you know we're not we're not trying to stop you. We're we're protecting you for lack of a better term from yourself. Yeah. Because once once you start to drink, your inhibitions are gone. And the decisions that you would have made, you're now trusting to us to make sure that we're not over-serving you. Uh, I was a college kid once. I went to bars where once you start drinking, they're pushing drinks down your mouth faster. And they're trying, you know, they just want to get that money. They build up that ticket. A higher tab means a higher tip. Well, we, we, I mean, our girls want, they want to earn their tips. They want to, you know, make money, all those things also. But ultimately, we love our customers. We care about them. And we want to see them tomorrow and the next day. And, you know, every week instead of just that one time interaction with him. So um, right. Make, making bank on one night is not a substantial or a sustainable business model. <laughs> and I mean, liquoring up your customers and sending them on their merry way is not a sustainable business model. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's man reading that TABC guidebook scared the bejeepers out of me, man. I was I was second guessing doing the alcohol, but we just decided to do it responsibly. And, uh, same thing, um, you know, it's, you gotta be, you gotta be responsible with it, but on this other side of it, it's, it's no more different or evil, just like tobacco or a hammer or a gun or anything else that it stills personal responsibility. If someone's gonna, um, have an issue with alcohol or an issue with their spending or their money, if it's not our business, it's someone else's. And so. As long as we're not taking advantage, as we're treating them fairly and uh, doing it, it, it's a good relationship both ways. And we got we got the best people who come through. We really do. So that's that's awesome, man. And Very little issue. Uh, you know, uh, I don't go to bars. That's I mean, let me rephrase that. I don't go to bars in Abilene ever because you can't smoke in any bars in Abilene. So I'm like, I'm not going to have a drink if I can't have a cigar. That's just me. You know what I mean? And it's like, I have my own lounge here. So where we are, where I am right now is actually the office of the studio. So when you go out of this room, you go in there and there's a three person sofa with one, two, three, four, five more chairs. And I'll show you on a video call in a minute after we get done with this, but like I have two, three, four, five friends that show up several times a week to hang out and smoke and have bourbon. And my thing is I don't have to drive anywhere. Yep. And so I don't want to go anywhere. You know what I mean? Last thing I want to be is having, you know, if you have two drinks, it's hard not to have a third if you just lit a cigar. You know what I mean? It's like we get in that rhythm to where it's like, oh, damn, we still got bourbon. We should light another cigar. And then it's like, oh, we're just lighting a cigar. We should pour another bourbon. You know what I mean? And being here, it's okay because I don't have to go anywhere. And you wouldn't believe how many friends of mine have Ubered home. And it's literally eight, ten blocks from here. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, when you get to be an adult, you think that way. Exactly. I'm not going to lose my career over some dumb shit. Yep, exactly. So tell everybody what you did before you were in the cigar business, because that's how I think we originally met. Yeah, so before cigars, uh, it was uh, electrical wholesale distribution. I was selling parts, and, and I enjoyed it a lot. And it was, you know, make finding solutions for customers. And um, one day, you know, we we were talking about the cigar shop thing as well. And once I got going on it uh, a year and a half into it, I wound up going full-time train car and we decided we couldn't do both because it was like, I can passionately sell a cigar, but I realized I wasn't very passionate about selling a three quarter inch EYS fitting for electrical conduit. However, both, both uh, businesses, I really enjoyed, you know, the customer interaction and, and finding solutions for people. But, uh, yeah, so that was where it started, and so I, I started in North Dakota, transferred down to Austin, Texas, after you moved out to Big Spring. It was supposed to be six months to a year, and, uh, you know, I've been in Big Spring since 2008 or nine. Two, <laughs> so, and you never thought that was going to be home. I did not, but, you know, I got a family here, I got a business here. So, And you got good friends there. 
man, I got great friends here. So, you know, I've had a lot of opportunities over the years to leave Abilene. And at the end of the day, I don't want to start over, man. I'm too old for that. And by start over, I mean, I don't want to go find my home cigar shop. I don't want to create a whole new realm of friends because when you build true relationships that like, these are your go-to, your count on friends, you don't make those overnight. That, nope. that, that, that is a long time process. So when, if, when you have five or six friends that are solid, like that's a big group, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. And so you know how important it is to have good people around you because we're not good all the time. So it's great to have people who take up <laughs> our slack. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's, it's funny. Uh, one of the friends, Jim, he came through last night. He lives in Houston, but he is out here for work and things like that. But we met the first year the train car opened. We've been friends for eight years. And he makes sure to reach out ahead of time and we get, get time to hang out still and spend time around cigars. And we, uh, without the cigars, we wouldn't have met. It just wouldn't have happened. And that, that's pretty much every good male friend I have in my life. And then, you know, my wife, Camilla, she's my best friend, but we did know each other before cigars. I'd smoked cigars a little bit here and there. And on our honeymoon, we had a cigar together, maybe two. But at that point, I wasn't a regular cigar smoker and started working into it more and now couldn't say i'm not <laughs> yeah yeah you're 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 knee deep now you're not going That's anywhere right. and oh, four yeah. kids man congratulations is there going to be more we, we aren't ruling it out so i was going to say one more man you got a basketball team on your hands exactly exactly <laughs> so, so let's how, see how it goes this one's great and she, she's so easy that it'll be it'd be hard to tell my wife no so well you know I would say this, it's not that she's so easy. It's that this is your fourth one. It's just gotten easier for you. Agreed. And that's, that is the truth of it. I mean, we're, we're more easy going as parents. I oh yeah. To, I hear this dinging on my computer. I apologize, Rob. Oh, I, you're good. I went to hit mute and it cut out your voice too. So I don't know how to mute this. My phone I can put on silent, but I'm on my phone more than my laptop these days. I don't know how to silence oh, them. I'm the my... same way, man. Every time someone tells me, oh, you can follow this link, and I'm like, can I do that from my phone? So let me ask you this. what First, how how is this new release from Romacraft that I see you over there puffing on making me feel jealous? Man, it's good stuff. I'll, I'll send you one. I'll, I'll tell you what, man. I, you know I'm a huge fan of San Andreas. Like, I mm -hmm. love a good San Andreas rapper. So it's it's got a definite Roma taste, but it's a little bit a little bit easier smoking than some of the other stuff, but still smoother flavor a little bit. Yep. Uh, I don't have a blend sheet in front of me, but it's got Brazilian Matafina, I believe, which is I think the wrapper of the Wonderlust. And so then you it's, get a little sweetness then too out of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's man, this thing, it's great. So we wound up. We started out. Um. Well, we got 18 bundles of 10, so 180 cigars we wound up with. And I'm down to about 15 or 20 out of those 180. So Wow. We moved we moved them fast. Uh, the, the core lines, when they come out, I actually just put them on this morning before I talked to you, which is pretty funny. Not to talk about on here, but I'm going to talk about it now that we're talking. Yeah. Bundles and boxes I put on pre-order so people can do it. And uh, – I priced them with the box discount already on there, so you don't have to add 18 or 20 or 40, you know, whatever number of cigars. It's by the box, the bundle. If you just add one, it's already the whole box or bundle. I have the discount already built into it, but I didn't put sales tax. We build sales tax into all of our prices, so I'm going to eat the sales tax. Any pre-orders, until they show up at my door, as soon as they show up, they're going to go back to the regular pricing where we have sales tax built in. But if you come to the train car, you notice you look in our cabinets, Every price that you see is what you pay. That's the price out the door. So if you've already added the tax model. in. You're not. I filled it in on everything. And I, I love. Cars. I love that pricing model. By the way. Yep. I wish every business in the world did it. Same. Uh, every same business. Uh, the other thing that drives me nuts on businesses now it's more and more. But the credit card fee. You see two ten dollar cigars. You go up to pay for it. Then there's an added credit card fee. It's like, come on, man. And they tell me. 
well, that's expensive. I'm like, well, so is your electric and everything else. But guess what? You build it into the cost of your business. And if you can't do that, I mean, I don't like these added charges afterwards, even sales tax. You see two $10 cigars, you bring them to the counter at the train car. You give me a $20 bill, you can walk out with those cigars. You're not going to pay more after. So I love right that. Now, I love we've that. We've built them out that way. And so, uh, so I'll pay the sales tax on them and cover that on the pre-orders. But then as soon as they show up, we're just going to you know, switch it over to the regular items that have the sales tax built in. And we'll just keep moving them. But that way, anybody that wants to be an early adapter on that is kind of a fun deal. Is so, there... Is that the same way for everything you sell? Yeah, everything we sell, it's built in. So, yeah, drinks. So, if I buy a cutter or a lighter, whatever, yep. what the price is, that's what I pay. Yep. Then at the end of the month, uh, so I have that. I had to do a lot of learning. We learned that with our soft openings. When someone paid and it came out to, you know, $10.23 for their drink or some, or whatever they got. And it was like, man, counting out pennies, that slows us down too much. So, I did research that night. One of the things I found is at the bottom of your receipt, if you build sales tax into the sales price, it's got to claim that on the receipt. So our receipts at the bottom say all sales tax and mixed beverage sales tax included in sale price. And so it's minor, but it was just, you know, little bits of research we had to do. And all you do is you build it into build it into the price. So I think that is genius. And I also think your customers appreciate the shit out of that, dude. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, sure. and, and you're just adding to their experience. Well, if you're grabbing a, you know, a box, but you're mixing and matching the cigars, and not everyone, but just like the grocery store, everything's getting harder these days, right? So as you're doing it, you're adding it to your little basket, you're grabbing your cigars, putting them in there. If you're keeping track in your head and you're trying to stay under 100, under 200, I don't know, under 2,000, I don't have any of those guys yet, but if you, if you know any of those guys, you want to send them over, then we try to stay right under 2,000. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, the wherever thing- you're trying to get, wherever you're at, you know where you're at, and there's no surprise later. Instead of having to do your math and say, okay, and then with PAX, it's this, and with blah, 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 it's that. And if I'm going to pay with credit card, it's that. No, it's, and, it is what it is. And I'll tell you this, too. I, I agree with you. I, I wish every business would do their pricing structure that way. But for a cigar guy, man, that's nice because I got a $100 bill in my pocket. I, I know exactly how much I'm buying when I'm in your shop, and I'm not trying to go, well, how much is the tax? And you know, am I going to have enough? And, you know, it starts making me go, well, I got to maybe not get that cigar. And, you know, and then when I go check out, I'm at like $87. And I'm like, damn, I could have got another cigar. More. <laughs> right. So at your place, I know exactly where I'm in because I can do basic math. That's yeah. very interesting. We, we, we keep it at cigar smoker math, right? Yeah, that's perfect, though. I mean, I never have really thought about it, but that's actually pretty genius. How long have you been doing it that way? Has it always been that way? Yep. So back uh, we when we did our soft openings, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday were soft openings. Monday of our soft openings, we built tax in. Tuesday, we built tax in, and it frustrated the heck out of me. And so by day three of soft openings, by Wednesday – we had tax built into our prices. Luckily, I didn't have as much inventory yet, so it was easy to go into everything, do that, learn how to turn it off and change change all the settings in the, in the point of sale system. And then uh, now, as we go, we just we have our our, our uh, little calculation built in. So when you do it, you just have the sales tax built right into it, and it gives you the price. And uh, we round it to the nearest quarter to make it easy, so we don't have to deal with pennies, dimes, or nickels. We still get people here and there that'll pay with pennies, dimes, or nickels, but but you're not you're not making people be like we need 23 cents exactly no i and love that i i wish i wish businesses would go across and i'll tell you that I mean, you remember because you're old like me you remember the glory days of the internet when we didn't pay sales tax on anything that we ordered online yeah and that was like why would you buy anything local if you don't have to pay sales tax nobody wants to pay sales tax Unfortunately, they fi- they figured out a way to get it out of us anyway. Yeah, they got all that. So now that's a whole separate issue you got to figure out. But the same thing built in, and we figure it on the back end, and we take it off everyone. It's not their concern; it's ours. So, I I love that. So let me ask you this: Do people call in and make orders, and do you ship things out, or is it you got to come by the shop? We do. Yeah, we have our our site, and so that's like the pre order is only on our site actually right now on on the on these new Mastranzas, but 
we do. It's it's not a big part of our business. I've never really focused too much on that because I like to focus on that experience and the customer experience. And I was I was even against it when we opened because I wanted. I remember that. I remember that. that. But COVID had to change. COVID changed my opinion on that. When I couldn't legally open my doors, we had to find another way to to, to keep the business alive and to feed those kids. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, we we've got the it's shop dot the trade car dot com, and um, we we've got say also, that say that uh, again. Shop dot the train car dot com, and if you go to the train car dot com, you can find there's a button that says shop. It takes you to our the well, website. We'll we'll have a uh, link to your shop in the show notes. So anybody that wants to go by, I mean, this is the time to do it because he's got these special cigars too. So don't miss out on that opportunity. And I'm so excited for them. They're, they're gorgeous. So, uh, Dude, I can't believe a free cigar coming out looks that pretty. Yeah. And I've never seen now. Will the, the band still be the same? So, uh, no, this was this is how you know that it's the maquette, which is part of their uh, small release series. Uh-huh. But uh, it's going to look similar to the uh, the Neanderthal band. It'll be like an orangish yellow. Okay. It'll be like a cursive writing, and they'll say Mastranza on there. And a really cool touch they added. You know how Roma has the band with the secondary band behind it, the white yeah, one. The, uh, like, like the yeah, the hieroglyphics. Yeah, the hieroglyphics and things. Well, this one here has, is covered in initials. And those initials on it are every employee at their factory, Nika Sueño, because Mastranza means it's, I couldn't give you this directly, but it's all the people around who helped us get where we're at. So they put every initial of every employee at the factory on that secondary band, which it's just a really cool touch. Some of the things that they do on that. So they, they are another company that I think has done a lot of things the right way. And what I mean by that is they've always produced quality at a good price. You know what I mean? They're not gouging people, but you know that when you pay anywhere from what, seven something up to 14 something is the ballpark. And depending on what size and what blend you want to smoke, but you're always getting more value than what you're spending. Agreed. Well, these ones, so the maquette, I think it was 13 and a quarter with tax. And that was more expensive because it's smaller production than all three coming out. They got a 550, six by, or a five by 60, four by 50, I think it is. I have to double check that. I, but, and then a a six by 52 Toro, but they're 10 to 12 bucks with tax at the train. Like, oh, that's insane. That, that's, dude, that's cheap. It is. It's, it's a, it's such a fair price. And I love it about them because, I'll have a rep message me, hey, we got this new cigar coming out. And without even looking at the price sheet, I'm like, yeah, you know, let me let me have a couple boxes. And I know it's going to be in some range. And it comes out and it's, you know, a $17 cigar. It's a $19. It's a $16. $10 used to be pretty easy to say that was the average price of a cigar without any question. No, no, it's not, it's... Anymo- not any longer. Exactly. If, if you find a good cigar under $12, you're finding a bargain. Oh, yeah. And there's a lot of bargains out there. You know what I mean? There's a lot of good cigars that are $12 and under, but there's a ton of cigars where $12 to $14 is just the norm now. Yep. It's really it's really changed even in the eight years that we've opened. How many cigars are you smoking a, a day these days? It varies, but I, I try to stick in that like one to three most days, but I'll still go my tears and I'll, you know, burn them all day uh, <laughs> i'm at the shop all day the problem is you, you're setting it down you're helping customers you're stocking boxes you're receiving in you're constantly relighting so, aren't you yeah yeah you, so i did find that out that the dream versus the reality the dream of owning my own shop was i'm gonna have this place i, I just get to hang out all day and it's you know my own personal lounge and it is but also you're but working, it's also your lounge so <laughs> So yeah, if if I really want to relax and enjoy a cigar, um, it's got to be in you know the non-peak hours, and I can sit down with some customers and friends and do that. But even still, sometimes we'll get talking, we'll talk about a cigar, and then they mention, "Hey, do you have any?" And all of a sudden, I'm you know you're back in the work mode. Uh, I had a group a group text with some buddies the other day, and I mentioned we were getting low on on these bundles, and one of them responds, "You know, oh, always 
the salesman and I was like, well, actually I was trying to be your friend, but yes, I guess it is also, it, it is a double-edged uh, sword on that. So we'll, we'll still go to other shops. We'll go to the Hemingway. We'll go to the Leaf. We'll go to where, wherever we are. We'll find a cigar shop and go to it. And it's, it's a different experience because you see a trash get over close to the top. You don't get up and go empty it. You know, someone else will take care of it. And granted our staff will too, but if they're tied up with a customer and I see that, if on my good days, which I try to be every day, I get up and do it versus <laughs> leaving it, right? Well, right. And I mean, that shows the kind of owner slash boss man you are, is that you're not like, hey, get in here and take that trash out. I, I try not to be that guy. There's, you know, I we, we still have, you know, you to make sure people are doing their job, but we're sure. all a team. But you your team, team and. Oh, yeah. And I'm uh, part of it. You're, you're part of the team, and I've always looked at it as don't ever ask people to do something that you're not willing to do yourself. 100%, my man. And so I, I, I've i been – I mean, one, I'm so happy and proud of you, man. Like, you, you started something that was so foreign to you. You're out selling electric parts. Do you remember whenever we traded cigars back in Abilene? We were. Do you remember how bad some of the cigars we used to smoke were? <laughs> I, I don't even want to name them because yeah, I don't want to slant on anybody. But I mean, well, we were smoking well, some pretty those unnamed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and in, in, in back in the day, we were happy to smoke them. Well, that that was. I keep referring to my conversation with Jim last night. Was so fun that he's been smoking cigars for 27, maybe 37 years. And that it's funny that how hard it is to find a bad cigar now. And even now versus eight years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, but it's, it's humorous that like there's so much, and there is still, there's so much just stuff coming out, just a different brand. Um, But the big thing is that there's so many good companies that you, you have so many choices of what you, can want to smoke that you don't have to smoke that uh i still have one of the t-shirts from warped and it's funny i noticed i saw it in the thing i'm wearing my warped shirt i today. saw that i saw that but, uh, we got t-shirts from warped i think it was the first pca we went to and it's a circle on there and it says smoke better cigars and we loved that motto and it was like like life's too short to smoke a cigar you don't like and so our goal is to make sure we're selling good cigars off the bat that way, you don't want to have someone have to, to power through a cigar they're not enjoying, that if you get them the right cigar to start with. Let me ask you this question, though. Like as, a, as a cigar shop owner, how do you yeah. deal with this? I buy a cigar from you. I cut it. I take a cold draw, and there's zero draw. It's completely plugged. And I go, hey, man, I can't even smoke this. I replace it. No I, questions asked. I, no questions. I don't. And I don't go back to my vendor and say, hey, can I get a free cigar for it? It's- you understand that's part of the business. It is. It's the same thing as if we spill a drink or if we make a drink and someone doesn't like it. We say, well, what don't you like about it? We try to figure that out. Um, I had a gentleman the other night. It was really humorous, actually. He had a Flor de las Antillas uh, torpedo. And he cut it, but he cut off like a quarter of an inch. And he was like, "I just this cigar is too dry, man. It's too dry. And... Uh, so I grab it and I squeeze it and it's not too dry. It felt fine, but he was convinced it was. So instead of arguing with him and telling him that the cigar was fine, I said, let me get you something else. So I went and I got a different cigar, brought it down to him. He was fine. I Happy said, that customer. Was yeah. And their tab was 300 and something dollars. He had eight people sitting around like to tell, to tell him, you know, to screw off and just power through that cigar for 10 bucks. And, um, and give him a bad experience on his credit card. So yeah, and 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 if he's not happy with that first cigar, maybe when he's done with that cigar because he's not happy with it, he packs up and leaves with all his friends. Yeah. Now, if he starts doing that every time, oh or yeah, if smoked, or if he would have smoked all the way through it, but uh, that one was interesting because it wasn't the cigar; it was his perception, whatever it was. I think he just didn't cut it enough, and I. My initial reaction was to be like, well, you know, let me cut this some more and, you know, blah, 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 and get it. But instead of telling him he's wrong, it was like, you know what, man? Like, yeah. So as, as long as you're not, you don't want to get taken advantage of also. There's there's less in the cigar industry, maybe, but maybe not. I think there's people everywhere. But uh, 
you just learn to deal with that. If, if you got someone who's always doing that, we've had to fire a few customers, um, tell them, you know, Hey, this isn't the place for you. It's very uncomfortable. It's very uncommon. But, uh, one of the other things we've had to tell our staff was that if someone's being, you know, mildly obnoxious or irritating, that's not enough to want to get rid of them. Cause I know I've annoyed people. I know you have, we all have somebody who, who might not like us. I know you've never heard that before. <laughs> yeah, for whatever. <laughs> I'm not everyone's cup of tea, Brent. I said, if you got rid of everyone who somebody doesn't like, you wouldn't have anybody. I mean, a hundred percent. And you know, you keep I've, them in line. I've had shops that in the past, well, I, I will not say shops. Hey, you've been to Lubbock a few times. Have you ever been to the Gaslight? Mm-hmm. Yep. So when I go to Lubbock, that's my favorite place to smoke because exactly. they have, and it's so funny is because you know, when you walk in right to your left is four club chairs around a coffee table. And then the rest of the place is just like regular tables. And it's like, I don't want to sit at that. I want to sit there. So if that's not open, we will actually sit and wait and watch. And whenever people get up, we're like, get it, go hurry. And yeah, yeah. that's our spot. And so, but I'll tell you this, I've been cut off from drinking in there. Uh, and, you know, because I'm out with friends and I'm, I've got, you know, two or three cigars. Well, if you're smoking three cigars, that's easily three and a half hours. And, you know, you're drinking good bourbon. Next thing you know, the waitress comes over and says, hey, uh, you've been cut off. And I'm like what me what about what did i do and so i went to the bartender and i was like hey man did i do something wrong did i get loud or something and he said no but i keep track of how much people drink and how fast they drink and so that's just for your protection and i was like oh okay cool i appreciate it and i went back to my chair yeah. but that and and dealing with customers like that instead of being like you're cut off or you're out of here you know what i mean he didn't ruin my experience and so what I love about what you guys do is you really focus on the experience of the people who come to the train car. And I am, I'm heartbroken when I go to shops and I don't see that because that's, that's not where I want to go. And that's not the community that I've told people that was amazing for the last five years. You know what I mean? Well, that, that, that's what we tell our staff. We talk about it all the time. That's the only thing we make here. I, I mean, I, technically I make a drink. But I didn't make the Coke. I didn't make the Topo Chico. I didn't make the whiskey. I didn't make the vodka. I didn't make the tequila. I didn't roll that cigar. I didn't make that cutter or that lighter. Like, I bought them from someone else, and I'm selling them to you. But I'm in that sense, you could argue I'm no different than the Internet or any other place you could go to buy it. What we provide is that atmosphere and that experience, and that's what people come to us for. Uh, in the past, we've had... Uh, staff who wouldn't check on people often enough. And they say, well, I, I don't want to bother them. And I said, well, now, I don't want you to bother them either, but the whole reason they're out here is for you to take care of them. Otherwise, they could be sitting in their studio. They could be sitting in a, in a room in their backyard in their backyard itself with their own beer, with their own bottle of whiskey, with their own cigars. And I guarantee you they're paying more for that drink at the train car than they'd pay for it at their house. 100%. No surprise. We don't, we don't trick them. We don't say one thing and charge another. They know they're going to pay more for that drink and going out for it, but that's their experience. And that's that whole thing back to, but that's what pays for that credit card fee. That's what pays for the electrical. That's what pays for the lights. I don't charge a cover for music. We have on occasion, we might in the future, but we don't have a cover charge at the door that the music is built into everything else for that. So, and I uh, love the way y'all do your music. I, I've actually talked to a few people who've played at your venue and, I didn't I like, I don't know them, but I've been talking to people. They were like, Oh yeah, my brother's played over there. Or, you know, I was backup singer for a friend over there. And it's like, you have some really just grassroots musicians that come play that have talent and right. it just makes the vibe at your place. Like not like any other cigar place I've been to. Well, we're really blessed with that outdoor patio. I mean, having live music and the smoke outdoors. And oh. I'm in our lounge right now. The lounge is amazing. And I love our lounge car. But 
especially you consider there's a group of six or eight of y'all that come out, but you're not all cigar smokers. Well, someone who's not a cigar smoker might not want to be sitting in a smoky room with all that all that smoke smell, or they might not want their clothes or their hair to smell like smoke when they go home. We've got that outdoor patio, and we, you know, it is outdoor and it is West Texas, so the weather changes on a dime and it changes back on another dime. But this time of year is the most awesome, amazing yeah, weather for your patio. It's so amazing, it really has. I mean, man, you get into late September, all of October, most of November, it is paradise. Like, that's where, you know what, I, I, I got to come see you again soon. and But I don't want to come do a show. I just want to come hang out. You know what I mean? Exactly. Oh, yeah. And that's one of the great things. I mean, you wouldn't believe how many people that I have bragged to about your place. And it's like, if you go anywhere near West Texas, you got to stop there because it's a one of a kind. And you and your wife have made it that not, it's not just that it's in two box cars. It's literally what you've done. I mean, you know, the train car doesn't look like it did when you opened. Great. Yeah. Like so. you have, you have, meticulously like made decisions along the way that has made the experience better for your customers. And I think a lot of people lose sight of that the further they go. Yeah. Business starts to eat them alive and it becomes like stress for them. And and I'm not saying you don't get stressed because I know you have, I've talked to you in some stressful times, but at the end of the day, when you make changes, you're like, how can we make the experience the best it can be? And I think a lot of people miss that. Let me turn that off. Uh, And so hats off for you and your wife doing that. That's so impressive. man. I love doing it. Not, let someone else, man. That's the thing. Like, if you don't love doing it, let someone else. I mean, that's. You know, I thought I wanted to open a cigar shop, and I realized I don't. Yeah. I love people, but I don't love business. Mm-hmm. And, and and so, like, I'm impressed that you've made the cigar bar such an amazing event for people to go do, but I'm even more impressed that you learn how to, you learned how to run a business. Like you didn't go to an MBA program and learn, you know, you didn't get a master's degree in business. Uh, we, we got one through the train car. I feel though. That's, yeah. You know, we've said that before. And that's the funny thing. It's uh, yeah. Even before with, with, with my previous job with the electrical parts, I mean, I was a manager but someone who manages a business, it still is different. It's a budget. It's other things they got to manage, but it still is ultimately someone else's that they're just. At the end of the day, you're there. still getting a paycheck. Yep. Yep. I mean, you when know. Up, you sometimes have to give up your paycheck to make sure everyone else gets theirs. I mean, if you do it right, and fortunately, I mean, we, we, we've done it, and we've done it right where we are able to actually make a living doing this. It's uh, I've made more money doing other things in my life. But this has been the most fulfilling, and I, I really enjoy that. So, yeah, I, I you know, I, I don't talk about what I do in my personal business or my personal life as far as what my career is, but you know, yep. and I manage a multi million dollar budget every month. But you know what? I manage it, it's not mine. And I treat the people who work for me as if I do own it because I care about my employees, but at yep. the end of the day, I'm not worried that the business is going to go under tomorrow and I'm not going to have a paycheck. You've been there. Oh, I yeah. remember during COVID you were, you were stressed. That was a, a low point in my life for sure. So, I mean, yeah. you, you were questioning like, what are we doing here? How, how, how am I going to make it through this? Because it was, it was, you can't be open. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like the government up, came, yeah. showed up, and said, With "Guns and badges, saying you can't be open because because and that's the funny thing because of the cigar bar, it was because of the alcohol portion." And we tried to argue. Well, I'll just sell cigars, and they said, "No, because of this other license you have, you can't operate." So, yeah, I was pretty close uh, to losing my mind. You know, not in, not physically, but uh, I, I was in a deep spot, and so my wife was pretty amazing, and she said, "Get away for a couple days," and so. I drove out to New Mexico and 
camped under the stars for a couple nights in the Lincoln National Forest. Luckily, before the government somehow closed the forest. <laughs> well, they didn't have enough people to see who was coming in and out of the forest. <laughs> that's exactly so. But you were like Yogi Bear. That's right. So, so let me ask you this: How much enjoyment have you had? through your eight years of the train car of meeting people in the industry. And I mean like Mike Rosales, Skip, uh, what's his last name? Skip Martin. Martin. Thank you. I was trying to say Bayless and I can't stand Skip Bayless. <laughs> Do you know who that is? Uh, it sounds familiar. I couldn't tell you. Is it an actor or is it a, no, uh, he's a sports, he's a sports guy. That's just, he, he acts like he's a, Cowboys fan, and he's just a douchebag. So Skip Martin is way cooler than that guy. Yeah. I was always yeah. a fan of Skip Martin, and you know what I love about Skip more than anything besides his cigars is that Skip Martin is who he is. He's not going to change who he is because of your own beliefs or your politics or whatever. And I'm like, you know what? You got guts when you're not on the same page with everybody else and you stand up and say what you have to say. Like, I respect you for that. Respectable. Yeah. Well, and, uh, yeah, but man, we've met so many cool people through the cigar industry. Uh, how about Custom Maui Jim? Side. Island Jim just came through again. Did, oh did you man. So he showed up maybe six years ago on a whim. Like after the trade show, he dropped his wife off at the airport and he drives and he set his GPS from the Denver airport and drove to the train car. Showed That's up on a, crazy. So cool. And then just in the last 30 days, I think it was, he showed up again. And I, I saw a, a camper trailer, like the uh, off-road trailers. And I was like, that looks like Island Jim. And I tried to take a picture in time. It was a blurry picture. And I look at it. And as I'm trying to figure out, I was like, that looked like Island Jim's. He and his wife come walking up onto the onto the porch and they hung out all night with us. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. So are there any people that you met? along the way that you were super excited to me, super inspired by, like who, who are some of the legends that, you know, you still get that young boy seeing a 15 year old girl for the first time, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Uh, there, there's a bunch of them in there and that's, what's so cool. But the weird thing that I'll, you get to meet him in person and it's really funny. They're, they're regular people as they're well. They're regular so people, cool. just like and you and me. You're smoking a cigar together, and that's the thing. I mean, they're still – they're celebrities. They are. But that's one of those things that I've absolutely fallen in love with on the cigar side is it's probably the greatest equalizer, that you're sitting around smoking cigars together. And I probably said this on our first episode, but one guy might be the CEO of a company. Another guy might be the janitor of that same company. But if they're sitting around in the lounge, they're equals. And oh, fact, 100%. That, that, that young guy, you know, that 22-year-old, he might know more than that 60-year-old guy about the cigar, and he might be, you know, the, the expert of the field all of a sudden. And, uh, but, no, it's uh, it, it's really cool as far as how that goes. I, I love it. And so, um, yeah, going around at the trade show floor and seeing these people, and when, when they know your name and you're a small shop in the middle of nowhere, West Texas, it's a pretty cool feeling. It's a it's a big old ego boost as far as uh, as far as that goes. We have people from all over the country who travel through, and they do actually. The train car has become a destination where they make sure they oh, stop away. I I I I sell it as a destination every time I meet someone who travels anywhere around where you are because I'm like, you won't find it anywhere else. It's it's a it's it's a one off. You know what I mean? There's no other yeah. place like it, and. I think what you guys have built is something that everyone who listens to this show, if you get the opportunity to go to Big Spring, like you got to go to the train car because I promise you, like, first of all, you've never been. Let me tell you what it's like. You're going to an old downtown Texas little town, downtown area. And first of all, if you haven't been to a lot of downtown areas, like in the old Texas towns, they're pretty cool. Like. Wait. And y'all are what about a block off the square? Yeah, and we we have probably one of the most iconic addresses. We're one hundred Main Street, like the start of Main Street, right there. And so it's it's pretty cool. And you're right next to the Union Pacific Depot. Yeah. 
Like, boom, it's huge right there. The things are right behind us. I was actually waiting, but I haven't had any come through while we're doing this recording. Which is but, unusual. Uh, you feel it. You feel it in your seat when you're in our lounge car. You, you're in a train car. We're in a train car right now. And you feel the train's going through. So it's pretty fun. Here's something that I don't know. Do you lease your area or do you own it? We're on a long-term lease through a, through a nonprofit who owns the property. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Very yeah. nice. So you're not worried about them pulling the rug out from under you because if no, it was a, a for-profit. Right. Yeah. But if you, you, you lease for a profit. It's like they're, one, they're always wanting to jack up your rent. And two, somebody that offers a little more money comes right in and kicks you out. Oh, yeah. So did you think about that when you first got into that location? We did. Uh, that was actually a big part of it also. And then uh, they worked with us amazingly. In fact, they didn't, they, they wouldn't let us pay rent until we opened our doors for business. They gave us the keys months before we opened. Wow. Uh, so they're, they're phenomenal. And then we have, we have 25 years. It was a five-year lease with four more five-year extensions with the, the whatever increases potential locked in. We, we know for 25 years what we're paying. So it, it's been it's been a really important part of making sure that we don't have to worry about, are we going to be here next year? Yeah. Your yeah. longevity comes into full fruition because you got it laid out. Yeah. You didn't just willy nilly decide, Hey, let's get this place. So, because yeah. have you ever thought of that? If you lost your lease there, let's just play devil's advocate. Like how do you reopen the train car? You got to go get two train cars and build somewhere. Oh yeah, we, we 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 play that game all the time as far as just you know whatever contingency planning and things. Uh, we're we're pretty pretty safe here, but I mean, what if a tornado came through, and flipped the cars on their sides? Um, We'd have to rerail them. Yeah, so because uh, they luckily, are actually sitting luckily, on rail, we right? Got the, the trains and the trucks right behind us, right? Right, <laughs> and, but I mean, you guys, I, if I remember correctly, the train cars actually sit on rail. So it, it, they're not, it, they look like it. Oh, okay. But it, it's just an optical illusion. They're just set down on there, but it, it looks like it. And they, I mean, they're still on the, the wheels and, the, and all that stuff, but uh, they're not actually railed, which might be a good thing. I don't know if they'd move more or not, but they're, they're on, solid on the ground. Yeah. You uh, don't, you don't want any rolling going on. No, we don't want any rolling going on. So. <laughs> so you guys are also, or as far as I'm concerned, you're also very well known for putting on great events. Yes. When, when's your next event? Uh, we have one. I, I'd have to double check the calendar. It's either the end of November or December. That's on the books. That's uh, with Brian McGee from Crown Heads, but with uh, Osgener Family Cigars, OFC. And then we're trying to work in still a Roma Craft event once these Muscronses show up with Dushan and the guys. And then uh, we've been talking with Lance Lewis. Lance is back in the industry with Drew Estate and to get our Drew Estate event for the year in. So, we don't have official dates on those. I, I should have, but uh, then I could have told you on the show, but I don't have them. So you had to watch our social hey, media. I just yeah. know that I've never come to see you that you didn't have an event right around the corner. Exactly. Like, and, and it's usually something like how many times has uh, LFD come in and cook steaks? Oh, yeah. We've done that a handful of times with them. Uh, we were the original uh, place for the, the steak off where uh, Brian McGee, and John Carney cooked steaks against each other, and they had judges come in and uh, no so way come in and judge it. It was a lot of fun. That was really cool. Um, we had a really cool black label event, and we had a big table setting out on the patio out there, and uh, plates and chargers and skulls and candles and all sorts of things. Um, again, focusing as much on the experience as on the rest of it, because ultimately. You can't do an event too often or you oversaturate uh, people's humidors. I mean, really. Well, and on top of that, if you have an event every month or even every other week, it's like not only is my humidor full, but also you're starting to hit into my budget where I can't afford to keep coming. Because usually when there's an event, I'm going to buy a box. You know what I mean? And. Uh, last event I went to a very good friend of mine and a very good friend of the show. His name is Colton. And, uh, I don't know, I guess probably six to eight months ago, he became an AJ Fernandez rep 
Have you met him? Yeah, he's great. Oh yeah, yeah. We, oh, we, Colton we brought is... AJ back in through. He's he's amazing. He's oh. he's the rocket man. So, do you know Frankie, president of sales, VP of the company? Not not personally, but so so me and Frankie connected years ago because of our music taste, and so we would text, you know maybe two or three times a month. And whenever he hired Colton, I was like, dude, you just got a good one. You don't know how good you just got it. And he was oh, like, man. he seems really like a good young man. And I was like, let me tell you something about West Texas work, work ethic. Most of the country doesn't even know West Texas work ethic, because when you find a West Texas work, uh, work ethic boy, man, you got yourself an all-star. Or am I right? A hundred percent, man. And I, it's so rare, like, if I if I was a cigar owner, a brand owner, I would be hiring every one of my cigar reps out of West Texas. Now, I'm a little biased. I'm a little biased, but I'm just saying. Yeah. You don't get any better than that guy. And he didn't, he, especially for a guy who had never done it before. Yeah. Yeah, he just stepped into it. He hit the ground running, though. He's, he does a great job. Well, he, he told me a story. He was on the show not long ago, and he told me – and this is impresses me, but he was like, yeah, man, I'm such an idiot. I had a event down in Houston. I get down there the night before and realize I had forgot X, Y, Z. And he drove all the way back to Houston, got his shit, drove all the way back and did the event. He told me, we talked about that. I was like, that's, that's, that's impressive right there. He, he did it right. And he, 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 he didn't leave his retailer hanging and that was really impressive of him. So, and he did the right thing, even though, some guys might have been like, hey, man, I'm sorry, but we're not going to be able to do this part. We'll still do this. He was yeah. like, no, nah, man, I'm taking care of my people. Well, that's what they say. You, you got to do the right thing even when it hurts. I, I got to do that the other day, unfortunately. I had uh, two online orders. You were asking about the online orders. And I get them all ready. We get them all packed up. We get them all boxed up, print the shipping labels. And there's a discrepancy because one of them, it, it's it's shipping somewhere else than where I thought it was going. So I have a confusion. I call the guy. I know this customer. I knew both the guys, actually. You know, I have relationships even with my online customers, a lot of them. So through the phone call, though, I'm now distracted. I'm on the phone, and I swap the labels. And I ship the wrong cigars to the wrong guys. I don't know if I've ever done that before. I hope not. And so we figured it out when the first guy got his package, and I called the other guy. I'm like, hey, man, I screwed up. Like, keep those. They're yours. That night, repackaging up, redoing it all, eating the cost on two orders of cigars. Wow. In. And so, I mean, yeah. Dude, let hurts, me tell you something. You do the right thing, even if it hurts, man. I call it doing the right thing for the right reason. Yeah. And as long as you're doing that, and I mean, you're right. Sometimes those lessons hurt. Let me, let me tell you something, man. I was up in Lubbock, and I was going to interview someone down on the patio. If you ever go to Lubbock, and stay the night. Yep. Marsha Sharp Freeway and 4th Street, that Hampton has the most incredible patio to smoke on. Heck yeah. And, you know, when I go to any hotels, first thing I do is look at their outdoor patio. Yep. Because I'm going to yeah. be out there, you know. Here's about the room, and that's just somewhere to sleep. <laughs> right. And so when I stay in Lubbock, I always stay there. But one time I went down to the patio to do an interview, and... Anyway, we ended up in not even doing the interview because we got to talking and smoking cigars. Next thing I know, it was, you know, 2 a.m. And yep. we never even got out the equipment because we just had a great conversation. So yep. I go back up to my room. And the next morning, when I come get ready to go to work, uh, the lady's uh, like, is that your leather bag out on the patio? And I was like, oh, shit, that's got all my recording equipment in it. So I run out there. The bag is gone. And now I'm pissed because if you saw my bag, why didn't you pick it up? But you know what? It wasn't her fault. You know whose fault it was? It was my fault because I had too much to drink on that patio, and I left $2,000 worth of equipment in a beautiful, beautiful horse hide Italian leather bag. Oh, so not man. only did I lose my equipment, I lost my favorite That's bag. Great. Yeah, and you know what? That was a lesson I had to learn. Yeah, you don't exactly. put pleasure before business because yeah. that's the kind of stuff that can happen. 
I'll tell you when the room matters, I found out. Smoking hotel room. In Vegas for the trade show, we did that this year again, but also a couple years back. The Venetian, I got a smoking room. How was, was that? Around and smoking a cigar in there. I smoked a cigar in the bathtub. I never would have thought that's something I desire because I'm not a bath person, right? I take showers. I don't want to sit in my no, home. we don't room. have time for that. But I'll tell you what. I ran that bathtub, and I lit a cigar, and I climbed into there. That was one of the funnest things I've done in a hotel room when I'm alone. <laughs> now, that is awesome. That is actually awesome because I've never had that experience. Yeah. Yep. So. Sitting in a bathtub, smoking a cigar. Like oh, that. Yeah. And, dude, for me, I got to have my music going in the background. I mean, you, oh, I might yeah. drown yeah. myself, though, just, you know, yeah. just yeah. Un- accidentally. You got to be safe with that, Rob. So Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I got warning. I got about five more minutes. We do have, we're hiring more staff. And so we got some interviews coming in here in a bit. So I'll have to get doing those things, unfortunately, but I hey, got about five more minutes. No, no, no worries. I, I appreciate yeah. you taking the time. I, I think this is the perfect interview to wrap up cigar talk, you know, over the years. I don't know if you know this, but we had in five years, five and a half years, 385,000 downloads. I didn't know that number, but I'll tell you what, you asked, did we listen to the first one? And we didn't because it was too much thumb scrolling, trying to get back that far. Like you said. You know, you know, when you go to a podcast, you can flip the order that they show them to you in. (laughs) That might have have been a smart move because we couldn't get there. So we just hit somewhere in the random. We saw one that was a catchy title and hit it and just played one after the other. But it was, I I was so proud of you on that drive too. I was like, man, he's got so many out there. We know it's. It's well, really I appreciate that, man. I'll tell you what, it's been what's a hell next, of a what's journey. Next for you, then? So I'm starting a new show, and okay. it's called the Crew Podcast, C-R-U-E. All right. Uh, let me show you here. I've got something up that will give you a little idea. Let me see where it's at. But here's the thing. Like, I love the cigar community, and I love the people that I've met the stories I've heard, but I'm also a huge fan of people from all walks of life. And that doesn't mean you have to smoke cigars or smoke bourbon for me to find you very interesting. I think you would agree to that, you know? And so finding people that I find very interesting, and I'll tell you this, this will be, I did an interview yesterday that was way far out of my comfort zone. I interviewed a 39 year old woman that has alopecia. That means she can't grow hair. Okay. And so she's bald completely. And the funny thing is the way I met her, she was actually waiting on me as a waitress and I was just being polite. I go, Hey, I dig the shaved head. And she was like, Oh, it's not shaved. And then I'm thinking, okay, you're a dick. Cause now she has cancer and you're just throwing that out there. Cause you know, I, I put my foot in my mouth often, Brent, you know that. And she was like, Oh no, I have alopecia. That just means I can't grow hair. And I was like, wow, I've heard of people like that, but I've never met someone like that. And we got to talking anyway, her story isn't about her not being able to grow hair. It was a dark, journey for her life growing up in an abusive family and then she married an abusive man and it took her a long time to escape that and so diving into some stuff that's not always comfortable to talk about but i think it's important for people to talk about stuff like that because there's a lot of people in her situation back when she was basically held captive that maybe somebody hears that and goes you know what i don't have to live like this Good for you. That's pretty awesome, man. I'm excited to check it out. So so I'm telling you, now, the very next week, I might be interviewing somebody who sells clown shoes, you know? It's just going to be random conversations that I have. Now, I'll still be smoking cigars, probably drinking a bourbon while I do my part, but the person on the other side of the table, I don't care if that's what they're doing that's no longer a criteria so basically you're going to be getting the cigar talk type interviews because you know i like to ask questions and probe a little deeper than what some probably do but at the end of the day i think a great story is a great story even if it's a sad story you know what i mean well 
I love it. One of my favorite music is sad music, and my wife can't understand that. She thinks it's the strangest thing. She, she's too empathetic. So tell me, tell me a sad song you love. All right, put you uh, on the spot. Yeah, let's see here. A sad song that I love. Uh, well, one of them is it's not really well. It's sad, but uh, an album uh, of Drew Drew Kennedy is sad songs happily sung, and it's pretty funny. And uh, that whole album is great. But um, man, you put me on the spot here. I know because so, when you think of titles, you're like, all right, but but you know, sad music because I I enjoy sad music. I, I call it the blues, but well, it's not all blues music, but it's still true. got that. It's got life stories told and where people, you know, one of the songs that I started listening to again was uh, Sinead O'Connor's uh, No One Like You. Is that what it's called? Nothing Compares. Nothing Compares to You. Yeah, and yeah. then, you know, my uh, uh, YouTube journey took me from her version to Chris, Chris Cornell's Cornell. version. Oh, man, what a <laughs> version. Dude, that's outstanding. Yeah, And, I mean, I can tell by the fact that you know that, that you're a YouTube junkie. <laughs> hey, I was asked this last night. I got one last question for you before we let yes, you go, sir. Brent. What you got? If you could only have one vice, you had to let go of all the other ones. Which one do you keep? Well, if you were to consider cigars a vice, that would no, be a hundred percent. I would. I would smoke a cigar without a drink before I had. I don't. I don't have that drink that often anymore. If I do, I've switched over to some good tequila as well, but. uh Instead of the bourbons, it, I actually it, it's counter to everything in my life growing up that I believed. But I feel better after a night of drinking tequila than after a night of drinking bourbon, believe it or not. As long as it's good tequila, and you're not you know overdoing it too much. But uh, cigars, man, they're, they're, they they changed my life, and it's all day, there's, every day. There's something primal about it, man. It's a uh, you get a group of guys sitting around. It's like cavemen sitting around that campfire. We're all around this shared fire, and. Uh, cigars well not only that you're like cavemen you're lighting something on fire and then puffing on it yeah, it doesn't exactly. get any more neanderthal than that that'd be the one too man if there was one cigar neanderthal. oh yeah 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 if i could keep enough lh in stock and i could only smoke one that'd be it that'd be my cigar wow that that says a lot like oh, you yeah. know for me the roma craft is the uh i i go back and forth but the aquitaine Oh, yeah. I, 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 that to me, it's, it's not too strong, but uh, you know, it, strength in cigars is relative, right? Right. Yeah, because that. what I consider not, not to be strong, somebody else would be like, damn, I'm sick. Yeah, exactly. But I, I'll tell you one more thing before I let you go. We were talking earlier about how many cigars you smoke a day. Yep. I'm down to two or three a day. You and you go. know what I, you know what I figured out? You know, I used to smoke eight, nine cigars a day, just like you. Yep. Yep. And what I figured out is when I only smoke two or three a day, man, I enjoy them. Oh, yeah. When you're smoking six, seven, eight cigars a day, you get to a point where you're just going through the motions. Yeah. Yeah. And so, well, hey, man, thank you again for coming on Cigar Talks for the last episode. It means a lot to me. You guys, your family means a lot to me. And... You know, I owe so much success to you and your wife. I don't mean to tear up. Wow. <laughs> this is emotional because, dude. It is, man. It, 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 it's a full circle. And, it, it, you know, it's I'm so proud of you, too. I'm glad it meant the world to me when you reached out to do this for the last one. And I remember the first one. I mean, it, do, it doesn't feel six years ago, does it? It flew by. Oh. But it and, you know, we've done, we've done episodes periodically in between. Well, exactly. But that first episode just means the world to me because man i was horrible at doing this and you guys didn't be like dude don't come back please don't come oh, back you, you, had, you knew you had something and you did man it, this has been fun i'm looking forward to crew and i'm gonna keep checking that out and dude uh well hey guys he's got to run thank you again brent for coming on look down in the show notes i'll have a link to their shop and if you get within 100 miles of big spring if you take a detour down to the train car, it will be one of those moments where you realize you've been missing something and it'll be a regular destination. Cause I know guys that regularly plan trips just to go hang out down there. And you know what? 
I'm going to do that very soon. Me and Tim and some of my friends are going to come hang out because I got friends that have never been to your shop. And I'm always telling them, you got to go. But you know what? They're like me. They don't ever go anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me know when you are so we can make sure we get together. Oh, 100%. It, it, I got to do it on a Saturday night. That way I don't. I can stay the night and we don't have to get up early. But Exactly. Hey, thank you so much. Again, I respect you, your friend, and you ever need anything from me, feel free to reach out. And you let Camilla know that I missed her. And congratulations on a fourth baby. And y'all just keep rocking and doing what you're doing, brother. When we get off, I'm going to go offline. I'm going to have you send me your address. I'm going to bomb you one of these cigars here before. Oh, we're that would be awesome. Them, my man. Yes, hey, sir. Let me ask you this. Yep. I know you're not a big Gurkha fan, right? No, I'm not. I mean, I'm not either. You know, you know, <laughs> you know Juan Lopez? Uh, not personally as well. Okay, but, but you know him. Yeah, yep. He sent me a DM one day on Facebook that said, hey, man, I heard you're selling T-shirts that says friends don't let friends smoke Gurkhas. Oh, God. And I said, well, to be fair, sir, I misspelled it. So that's not what it says. Cause I didn't want to get sued. And he goes, when's the last time you smoked a Gurkha? And I said, man, I ain't smoked a Gurkha in five or six years, to be honest with you. And he said, you care if I send you some cigars? And I was like, no, man, send them. I, I, I mean, I'm not a Gurkha fan, but I'm not going to turn down free cigars. And so <laughs> he sends me two boxes, a Maduro, the Revenant. And then the other one, which was this crazy, awesome cigar. And it's also called the Revenant, but it's like the Habano version of the Maduro. And Uh, it, I can't remember, but it seems like it was a San Andreas wrapper with a Corojo binder. Like, who does that? And no, 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 I take it back. Not Corojo, Cameroon. The binder was a Cameroon, which I had never had a cigar like that before. And I was like, okay, well, this asshole, it sent me some, you know, crazy expensive cigar. And sure, everybody has an expensive cigar that's good. And when I went online to look, a box was like a 125. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? I take it back. But you know what? You a lot of people. Your own foot in your mouth, huh? <laughs> a, a lot of people gave me a lot of shit for admitting well, that Gurkha made a good cigar. But I think every brand out there does have good cigars. But sometimes, and that's what we were saying, there, there's so many good cigars now. The problem is just finding the ones that are good for you, the ones that you like. And I don't know if you're like I am, and I think you will be when I say this. Tell me that you spend more money on certain cigars because you know the people who own the business – and it's not just the cigar. It's also the oh, quality of the people who run and own that company. The story and there's emotion tied into all of it, uh, definitely. So that's uh, the second Tuesday of every month. We do that Blind Tuesdays, and we love that. We take the band off the cigar, 8 p.m., second Tuesday of every month, Blind Tuesdays. And it's that paired with the drink. It's either a, a bourbon, a scotch, or a rum. And then for 20 bucks flat, and we're all smoking the same cigar together. And it's it's really dangerous. Whoa, 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 whoa! You're getting a cigar and a drink for twenty bucks flat. Oh yeah, and it's always a greater value than that. We make sure of that. But it's dangerous. What if you start hating on that cigar and it turns out it's your favorite brand? Or what if it's a cigar that you're just loving and you're raving about it, and it turns out it's a brand that you've been you know d- dogging on, right? It's oh, pretty 100%. fun. It well, takes all those it takes all those preconceived notions out, and you, you can't have it. All you can do is judge it based on the experience of the smoke that you're enjoying, right? And I'll tell you this, if you, if you smoke with friends, do that sometime. Everybody bring what they consider to be a good cigar, but take the band off and trade. That experience is one of the best experiences that I've ever had is by doing that because you talk about going into smoking a cigar with no preconceptions. Like it's a whole new world out there. Oh yeah. It's it, it's just what it is, and that's all there is. That you take off all that pomp, circumstance, all the flash and the bling, and it's about the cigar. So, well, hey man, I wish you guys all the success. And like I said, if you ever need something for me, Brent, you know I'm always here for you. Mm-hmm. And I I appreciate everything that you and Camille have done. And you make sure you tell her I said thank you. I will. Well, and she'll hear it when she listens to the episode as well. But uh, what a ride it's been, huh? Oh, man. You know what? It's been a great ride. It's been a stressful 
uh, there's, there's been good times and there's been bad yeah. times, you know, uh, I don't know if you ever met my longest running co-host, Bryant. Did you ever meet Bryant? Yep. Okay. So, you know, a lot of people have asked me and we, we've just kept it, you know, that things, people grow. Yeah. And I, I saw a message. It was a three-way message. Someone sent that was like, Hey, Bryant, how come you're no longer on the show? And he said, we just outgrew each other. And I was like, you know what? That's a good way to put it because I still consider him to be a very dear friend of mine yeah. and I respect him. And he did it with me for four years. So that's a hell of a long run for people to get yeah. along all the time. And I'll be honest with you. I can be a prick. <laughs> <laughs> I try not to be, but you know, sometimes it comes out because when, when your name is on the 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 show just like your name and your wife's name's on the cigar shop there's certain things that you want it to be done your way and there's not going to be any flexibility about it and that's just the part of owning a brand or whatever it is that you do yeah but i i, I say hats off to bryant i appreciate all he did for us i still love the guy uh yeah. but man i'm gonna come see you soon i know you got to go looking forward to it Yes, sir. Rob, it's a pleasure, man. I'm so so proud of you as well. And it was a it was an awesome run and uh, I'm looking forward to what you got next. Hey man, I will Fair keep enough. you in the loop and let you know when that new show premieres. It should be out in a couple of weeks. Heck yeah, man. Hey, I'm this show right here will be coming out today, baby. Wow. Heck yeah. yeah. Well, well, I told well, everybody it was gonna be over October first. And I, I told everybody this four months ago. And we're we're recording on October first, so look at that. We got it. Turn it around. Right under the wire. <laughs> That's how we roll, isn't it? <laughs> That's right, man. Well, hey, take care of yourself. Love you guys, and we'll talk to you soon, man. Thank you. Hey, Bye. guys, check out the show notes. Go check out their shop. I promise you it's something to behold. Take care, Brent. We'll talk to you later, bro. Happy trails to you. Keep smiling until then. Who cares about the clouds when we're together? Just sing a song and think about sunny weather. Happy trails. Bum, 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 bum,